Boys, we are gathered here today to witness the death of what could have been a very promising up and coming gotcha game in the form of Wuthering Waves. Unfortunately, Wuthering Waves didn't make one billion dollars in its launch. And unfortunately, I've been sent here by Kuro Games as I am heavily paid and sponsored by Kuro Games as I am their agent. I'm also the CEO of Kuro Games to be letting you guys know we are announcing the end of service in 1.1. Uh, we apologize for the lackluster gaming performance that all you guys have experienced. And uh, yeah, we will try better in Wuthering Waves 2, which will be coming out exactly three years after, after Genshin Impact 2 comes out, because we don't have the ability to innovate our own games. So thank you guys so much for your support, and uh, we'll, we'll see you in the next game. Thank you very much. This is John Curro signing off. Our waves have, in fact been weathered now let's actually get into this so we're doing the gotcha sensory report of may now i hate to say i told you so but i told you so i've been saying this for over three months that these little hoyo cucks are gonna get so excited when literally one week of Wuthering Waves, uh, one week of Wuthering Waves profit does not completely destroy everything in Hoyoverse and everything it holds dear. So we're going to break this shit down. We're going to talk about all this and I'm going to explain to you what's going on in the top 10 gacha games. I want to make sure that you guys know. Um, if anything isn't making as much as Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail, it's a dead game. And that's just the truth. So let's break this shit down. Monster Strike made 16 million, down 4 million. Fate Grand Order went down to 19 million. Nikkei went down to 20 million. Wuthering Waves made $24.8 million in eight days of their initial launch. And we're going to go even further into why this is a massive success and why people freaking the fuck out. This is the reason why people watch me because I'm going to make all of this panic go away and I'm going to explain to you the actual logistics of what's going on here. Love and Deep Space made 33.5 million. Solo Leveling Arise. Let me double check the release date. Solo Leveling Arise release date. This game had just three weeks of release and made, I'm not going to lie, a very surprising $39 million of revenue. Now, I will say, for more PvP leaderboard-oriented content, this is still quite good. Um, I foresee this number heavily dropping off next month. I do. This game has been riddled with issues, if you can believe it, even more than Wuthering Waves. But the bones of it are still in a great spot, as well as the IP is very hyped right now. Unfortunately, solo loading, maybe it can fix it, but the loading issues are so fucking brutal, it's ridiculous. Ark Knight's making a staggering $44.6 million, which is really funny because the reason why they made $44.6 million is because they released a skin that was formerly unavailable on Global for the first time in four years. One of the original reasons why I wanted to quit Ark Knight's because the KFC skins were re-released in a form of Street Rider skins and the banners and the sales were absolutely amazing. Uh, which I've been telling them for four years that, yes, Americans do want uh, skins with girls with giant buckets of chicken. And if that's not the reason why it blew up, hey, I don't know why the fuck else it would have. Maybe there's something else, but let me know. For you guys saying that I'm wrong, let me know what it is. Or maybe it's just the fifth year anniversary. Who knows? And to celebrate KFC skins. You can't say that the KFC skins have nothing to do with the massive success. Okay, you can't say you cannot say the KFC skins did not have anything to do with the success of Ark Knights. Okay, because even I am going to be re-downloading just to be getting those KFC skins. Okay, now let's continue. Naruto Mobile in just China made $46.8 million. 
I really don't know what this game is, but it is fucking slaughtering on all fronts. Same thing with Monster Strike. Only JP, a staggering 16 million. Now, Genshin Impact. Genshin Impact and Honkai Star Rail. Genshin Impact is down. I shit you not. $67 million. Okay? Genshin Impact is down. Once again, it is down. $67 million. I don't see anybody worrying. I don't see anybody worrying about Genshin Impact's state of the game when they've lost well over 50% of their profit in one month. This is very important to note, and we're coming back to this later. Honkai Star Rail has only lost $22 million. Still down around 17 to 18%. So both games are down right now, but Honkai Star Rail will most likely pick up in 2.3. I think we are going to see the biggest banner sale in Honkai Star Rail history with the release of Firefly, depending on what day it lands in the month. I believe it's going to be somewhere around the 20th. I'm not entirely sure, but I do think that Firefly sales are going to fucking slaughter due to her presence in the story, her being very well liked, her kit design is very great, and she's also incredibly busted. I did hear that she got nerfed, um, but I can neither confirm nor deny that. I'm not entirely sure, uh, but regardless, I myself will still be pulling for Firefly and her light cone 1 million percent, and I'll be getting them whenever, you know, the gem gods bless me. So let's talk about Wuthering Waves. Now, Wuthering Waves making this much money, in my opinion, I did not see this coming. I predicted an estimate somewhere around 10 to 12 million in their release. Now, this had a couple factors, okay? I also knew Wuthering Waves was going to be very big, but I never knew it was going to be this big. Now, with the projected numbers that they have now, I would still only predict somewhere around 20 million. So being at 25 million with only eight days of launch, and in case you guys don't know how this works, uh, the sensor report takes how much money they made in the whole month. Wuthering Waves only had eight days. Solo Leveling Rise only had 23 days. This is very shocking. Clearly, new mobile games are on the up and coming, and people are really looking forward to these, okay? So let's talk about every issue that Wuthering Waves had at launch. Okay, so Wuthering Waves had eight days instead of 30, 31, already up to a rough start, already up to a very, very, very rough start. A free standard selector went out, which essentially means that now there's a lot less light spenders. And pretty much the only thing that exists right now are completely free to play players and then mega whales. Because with the amount of free five stars that you can get, there's almost no reason to spend money on the game whatsoever unless you just got unlucky and didn't get your Gion. The third thing is, first banner was a guy. Now, that being said, he was a very well-liked guy, but men banners usually don't do too well. Compensation after compensation, as well as mobile struggles, which is a bummer, because this revenue report only shows mobile revenue, okay? As far as Wuthering Wave's total revenue goes for the first eight days, it actually made well around 50 to 60 million when you consider PC compensation. And the mobile struggles have been brutal. Now, I foresee this game being more like Final Fantasy XIV, which is the longer that you stick with it, the more that you'll be rewarded. Because once they get all of these issues fixed out and ironed out, the better things will sell. Now, for next month, we are getting Yin Lin. Yin Lin is releasing in about 15 days, and that banner should do very well. Me personally, I think right now Wuthering Waves is in a very rough spot because the developers really need to earn back the community's trust, including myself. There are a lot of issues that need to be fixed. I think the 1.1 developer live stream and hearing how the developers actually feel about the state of their game is gonna be very paramount to actually establishing order back in their community because right now it's in a very difficult spot. Now, that is my opinion on Wuthering Waves. To be honest, people are doom posting and saying Wuthering Waves, it's over. Uh, these people are stupid and should be ignored. 24 million for a very rough launch that gave compensation after compensation out. It's actually very, very, very good. And if you disagree, 
I would love to know your counterpoint in Twitch chat at twitch.tv forward slash techno, which I stream every day, or in a YouTube comment, and I would love to address those later. But people who don't understand revenue, why games make revenue, and compare it at surface level with no background information whatsoever, well, obviously their opinions are always going to be biased and also just not complete. But this for a very buggy start is actually very good. It's the same thing with people saying this ideology that the reason why Genshin Impact lost over 60% of its revenue was because of Wuthering Waves. I just don't think that's true. I don't believe they had any banner unit release whatsoever in the past month. I believe Arlecchino was over a month ago. I don't believe that counted in May whatsoever. But yeah, in a bubble, this can really lead you into perceiving things in a skewed fashion. However, I really think the banner sales that are really going to matter is not next month, but July's. Because July will be going head-to-head -head with what might be a good patch for Genshin Impact, probably not knowing Genshin, uh, as well as Zenless Zone Zero on the same release. Seeing Yin Lin's banner sales will be huge, and also to see if Kuro Games can gain back the trust on a global audience. Right now, it kind of seems that Wuthering Waves on uh, US and Wuthering Waves on Japan are very equal, when usually it's Japan that spells more, or, uh, spends more than United States. So clearly they're having a customer service loyalty issue right now. Can they get it back? I don't know. The only thing that they can continue to do is continue fixing their game because what we do have for Wuthering Waves is a great bones of a game. Is this the great calamity? Is this the great ending of, ending of Wuthering Waves? Absolutely not. Kuro Games understands they have a lot of work to do and they need to deliver. Just the same thing with Hoyoverse. They realize they now have competition and solo leveling and Wuthering Waves and shit, even Nikkei. And they really need to deliver. I'm expecting big things from Natlin. I really hope I don't get my heart broken again. But right now, this is the most alive we've ever seen the competition in the gacha space, in my opinion, of all time. This will be known as the Great Gacha Wars over the next couple months. Especially when Azure Promelia comes out, when Project Mugen comes out, we are going to finally see these companies have to fight for your loyalty. We are going to see these companies compensate us for their misconduct and mishaps. And we are going to see one of the most alive spaces we've ever seen in gotcha history. And that's just the truth. And I'm all here for it. And honestly, I encourage more mistakes because more Apollo gems are always great. Should be good. Things look great for the future of Wuthering Waves. Things also look great for the future of Hoyoverse, but how things shape up in the future, I'm very excited. But it looks like this once monopolized area isn't so monopolized anymore. And whether you like Wuthering Waves, whether you like Genshin Impact, there's one thing that we all know. There's a lot of really good fucking games to play right now. And if you play gacha games, you know you can play four or five a day because it's like six minutes of gameplay every day anyways. Shit's good. It's looking really good. Let me know your thoughts in the comments. Appreciate y'all. See you on the next one. Peace. And yes, I do think Zenless Zone Zero is also going to be successful. Guys, it's a fucking Hoyo game. Peace.